Today in our 2015 Ford Transit Connect, we'll be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with a four pole flat trailer connector. Part number C56218. Here's what our wiring looks like installed. This wiring harness gives us the basic lighting functions that are required by law in order for us to safely and legally tow a trailer. Our white wire provides the necessary ground connection between our transit connect and our trailer. Our brown wire provides our tail light and running light function. On this circuit, we have a total power output of six amps, which is more than sufficient to tow a trailer that has several incandescent light bulbs or basically as many LED lights as we want because they do draw less power. The yellow wire is our left turn signal and left brake light. The green wire is our right turn signal and right brake light. Each one of those wires has a total power output of three amps. What's great about this wiring harness is that it is a plug and play option. There is no cutting or splicing required to any of the factory wiring inside your vehicle. Now, one thing that I like to do, since this wiring harness can be stored outside to help better protect it from the elements, you can put some dielectric grease inside your connection. This will help prevent any corrosion from occurring due to moisture. Now, we have this dust cover, which will help better protect it as well. And we can also use this dust cover to help store it around the receiver on our hitch just by going through the safety chain loops. So we'll go through there, wrap around, and secure it into place, just like that. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. All right, to begin our install, there's a couple plastic panels we need to remove so we have a way to route our wire and gain access to our taillight connectors. Here are the two side panels that we need to remove. We have one for our passenger side and one for our driver's side. I've already gone ahead and removed these because in our particular application, we have shelving units that are bolted in place that are very difficult to remove and are blocking our panels. These panels just simply pull off. There's no tools required. You just, there's a little indentation. You grab and pull and it'll come out. Now, if you're playing and getting shelving units like this, it's a good idea to install your wiring before you install the shelving units because it will make your life a lot easier. Now, our third panel that we need to remove is the sill plate panel. So we have a way to route our connector over to our passenger side. To do that, just grab it and lift up. Now on our driver's side, we'll be working up in this area up here. Hey, the large gray connector that I have pulled out to the side, that is where our tail light connector is. And we need to connect our wiring harness to that. There is a gray tab on the connector that you'll press and pull apart. Here's what it looks like disconnected. Now we will plug in our connector that has the yellow and red wire to the driver's side. This is the connector that is closest to our module box. Here's what our wiring harness looks like connected on the driver's side. Okay, we went ahead and routed our power wire to make our connection with our module. We just stuck it behind our panel and route it up. Now we'll connect the two. So the black wire that comes off our module, that's our constant 12 volt power. We'll slide a butt connector over it and crimp it down. The black wire that we routed behind our panel, we'll strip back a little insulation from. Stick that inside the butt connector and crimp that down as well. Now from this point forward, every butt connector that we have will wrap in electrical tape just to help better protect it and help keep the elements out, which could cause corrosion or short circuit. We went ahead and routed our four pole flat connector behind our panel the same way that we did our power wire. Now we need to locate a grommet to pass the four pole flat and our power wire out through. If we peel up our carpet here a little bit, we found a grommet right here. We'll take a screwdriver or a trim panel tool and push the grommet out of the vehicle and we'll drop our wires through the hole. 
With our power wire and our four pole flat connector passed through our grommet, we went ahead and routed our passenger side connector with the green wire across where our threshold sits and behind our passenger side appearance panel. Now on our passenger side, we'll be working up in this area for our connector. And here's what the connector looks like on the passenger side. It's identical to the connector on the driver's side. We will have a gray tab to push on as we pull to separate the factory harness. And here's what the factory connector looks like disconnected. And here's the connector that'll go in line between our tail light harness and the vehicle's body harness. And here's what our wiring harness looks like installed, plugged in line with the factory wiring. And this white wire with the ring terminal that comes off of our module box, this is our ground wire. We need to attach this to our vehicle's sheet metal with the provided self-tapping screw. I'll just do it right here next to our jack compartment. Now we secured our module box into place by wrapping the wires behind the trim pieces here and here, which clip our panel into place to the side of the vehicle. This holds it in place nice and tight, so it won't rattle. Okay, now we can replace all of our panels. Now we're to take the grommet that we removed and we'll cut a slit in it. I like to make an L shaped, just so our wires have room to rest in the middle. This spot right here where our power wire and our trailer wires pass through is where this grommet was. So we'll take our wires, slide them through the slot that we made in our grommet and push our grommet back into place. Now we'll take some silicone, which we have available on our website, and we'll seal around the opening in our grommet where we made our slit to help keep any moisture or debris or exhaust fumes from entering our vehicle. Our four pole flat wire, we routed over and secured up our slack to our bumper fascia with a couple zip ties and we just routed the connector to the center of our hitch and secured it with the dust cover to our safety chain loops so it's readily accessible for us. Our power wire we routed towards the front of the vehicle, making sure we avoided any moving parts and sources of heat such as the exhaust. So it goes over our spare tire, comes out in front of it. We have it secured to a bracket that holds our brake line in place goes over the exhaust hanger, goes over our fuel fueler neck, comes to the side of our gas tank where we have it secured our wiring harness, secured our parking brake cable, goes over this heat shield, and then we followed our brake and fuel lines, and we have a bracket to hold an additional line in there that's empty, so we just pass the wire through these brackets up towards the front of the vehicle, and it goes over our front subframe connector right here. And this is a pull wire. We drop down from the engine compartment to pull our wire up into the engine compartment. We'll just tape it to this wire. Now we'll pull the pull wire up. Our power wire comes up. Then we have it secured to our firewall right about in the center of it with the zip tie. There's a hole that we can run our wire to. Then it comes over. We have just enough wire to reach over towards our battery box. Okay, this is our battery box. We'll move the cover by lifting up on it. We have about nine inches of excess wire. We'll move that. Strip back some of the insulation. Take our butt connector. Stick it on, crimp it down. Take one end of our fuse holder, strip back a little insulation. Stick that in the other end of our butt connector. Crimp it. The other end of the fuse holder, we'll strip back some more insulation. Place our ring terminal on, and we'll crimp that down. We'll wrap our butt connector up with electrical tape, just like we did the previous one.
Now in order to attach our ring terminal to our positive battery post, this nut can't be removed all the way, it is crimped on. So what we'll do is we will take our ring terminal and we'll split it in the middle, bend it out a little bit, and we'll slide it underneath our nut, and then we'll bend it back down, and then we'll tighten the nut back up, and that'll give us our connection without damaging our factory battery post. Now just like that, we have our connection made and our positive battery post is secure. And now we'll install our fuse into our fuse holder. Now we tuck the fuse holder and the wire inside the battery box, making sure our black power wire goes through this notch right here in the side of the battery box, and we can reinstall the cover. And now we'll use a four pole flat trailer tester to ensure that our wiring is working properly. You can pick up one of these on our website as part number I26. Turn our headlights on, you can see that our tail light and running light functions working. Our left turn signal is working. Our right turn signal is working. Now I'll step on the brakes. Our brake lights are working. And with our foot on the brake, we'll make sure our turn signals still work properly. So there's left. And there's right. Everything's working just like it's supposed to. And that completes our look at and showing you how to install the Kurt T connector vehicle wiring harness with a four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56218 on this 2015 Ford Transit Connect. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com and leave us a comment if you have any questions.